I've come pretty far as a game developer. Many, many, many stars ago. Oh man, check this out. It's 2017. Ah, good memories. Playing this game from scratch, I was really surprised that I... I found myself, like, laughing. Even though, like, I made this, what, it's like, five years ago-ish, yeah? I, uh, I realized how, how, like, uh, how, how, like, innocent my game development was. Uh, I never want this game to be played by YouTubers ever. I'd die from embarrassment, honestly. Okay, so now we're in 2017 winter. And this was like more professional side of my game. So I, 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 so I remember working on this game for like two weeks straight. After class, I would just freaking go home, work for like whatever hours I had and then go to sleep and then go back to school and do it all over again for like two weeks straight. That was brutal, man. Like, I had barely any time to do homework, and I just... Ugh, those were... Those were really tough, tough times back then. And remember, I did physics. I also remember, uh, taking compositional, uh, lessons with my composer back then. Like, my music's, musical skills back then wasn't, like really professional it was just kind of like is this gonna work can this work I'm just kind of guessing you know and so once I uh, took um, lessons for my musical composer my my teacher um, apparently he's a uh, he's an LA Philharmonic composer and um, he taught me a lot of things I, I have no idea how I got that I don't. Ha I have no idea like how why he would you know take me under, but I remember that he would um, come to class uh, to do like a um, a uh, a presentation, and he was really good friends with my uh, musical teacher, and um, I was very engaged what uh, the composer was teaching and saying stuff like that. And immediately, I wanted his email, and I wanted lessons from him. And um, I took a couple of weeks of lessons from him, and uh, and from that I became like a pretty good composer. I only took like a couple of weeks because it was it was expensive. I think it was like a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars a lesson. Uh, it, it was yeah, it was a lot. Oh, and I also remember that my game was in a game jam, and I was working with this artist. I pretty much, like, was on the RPG Maker forum, and uh, she needed a, uh, she needed a musician, but I uh, instead worked for her as, like, a musician, art, uh, not an artist, but, like, a programmer, and, um, and pretty much store about pretty much everything to the game besides art. And um, so we finished this game in two weeks, and and um, uh, lots of people loved our game. It was nice. I had like that ten minutes of YouTube fame. It was like videos after videos after videos, and it was really really nice. And the YouTubers back then, they they were like little timers compared to uh, them now. They're big timers now like holy crap <laughs> anyways so I was um, working on the game and two weeks had came in and you know we published the demo and then we needed to finish the game for for uh, the completion of the game so we spent another two weeks on it got the game done and published it and uh, we had some criticisms on it, like the game was too short, it wanted to be longer, but we just could not do that since uh, me and the, my artist, or uh, Plu, um, 
that's her name, or uh, her, uh, her um, internet name. So we just had like our creative differences and we moved on and I moved on to another game. But I learned a lot from working with her. Um, I realized like uh, working together and um, and respecting our creative differences, knowing when uh, uh, task should be assigned to because at that time I was uh, I was also trying to do art, but I should have just let her do the art. I was, you know, I was trying to do her job, um, and then uh, it, it's mostly like respecting each other's creativities and our boundaries and stuff like that. So now we're in 2020, and I made a game called Chains That Bound Me. This was like just after I graduated from my college and um, I started working on this for like a year uh, after college but I also worked on this uh, for a year on and off while I was in college just working on this game and I remember um, I remember I just did not have a lot of time working on this game for the first year when I was like working on it, it was, uh, it was, it was all physics, honestly, like, like my classes were, were pretty hard. It took a lot of my time. And um, at that time I was also still doing music. So I would, uh, I would uh, spend an hour or two every day practicing my violin and I would have, um, a violin teacher that I paid weekly for lessons so that I could um, improve my um, musical skills and um, and it did pay off it, it worked a lot um, because um, I'm able to actually uh, understand uh, how instruments are played and that helped me um, uh, write better music especially for the violin I also spent quite a bit of money on this game, like, uh, quite a bit, I mean, after I graduated, I, I saved up a bit of money, and, uh, and I, I think I spent like a few thousand dollars just, um, uh, just for uh, getting the art done and stuff, and um, I never I never like finished the game. It was uh, it was so big in scale and scope. Like my next game, I picked an RPG genre, which was a big mistake. And it was just it was just too big, way too big for a solo indie developer. And so. Uh, I decided that I'm gonna finish this. Um, and I'm gonna finish this like the year after I graduate, and just publish this as like a demo, like an incomplete demo. And that'll be a game. It has a beginning, it has a middle, it has an end, it has a good cliffhanger. Like it, it's it's good enough as is. And if people wanted to play more. Um, they could wish list it, and you know, um, maybe that'll change my mind to actually resume the development of the game. But that didn't happen at all, and um, there were uh, there were quite a bit of mistakes that I made from this uh, from this game. First off, it was um, I didn't market um, this game well enough. The art's pretty good. Um, uh, the the story writing from what I hear from youtubers uh, it was pretty good too and um, I think it was just the budget and also thinking back on it now like I shouldn't have made this an RPG maker it it's just it just wasn't feasible it's just too much way too much and also I uh, I uh, I'm showing this like footage from like 2019, like, 
when I was doing this, it's like old gameplay footage, you know, just like how much work I put the how, how much work I put into this game, and yeah, my baby. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, all of my games so far have been free, uh, but. Um, my next game, which is uh, Emily, uh, I decided to make a uh, a shorter game, uh, which is about like a, an AI, computer AI that just has like a self identity crisis, and um, it's a horror game. And so I I decided to start thinking more about uh, the business aspects of game development instead of what I wanted to make. And so I made Emily, and um, uh, because it was like a short game, and uh, I didn't have like a lot of money because I spent it all on you know the chains that bound me. It I only had like pff, like maybe two hundred bucks, so I designed the game. I um, and I had a, uh, a pixel artist, a very simple pixel artist that I worked with. I didn't ask much of him. Um, and so I made sure that the scope was really small for this uh, game. And, um, uh, and so uh, even though um, you know he gave me some of the art, I still had to edit the art and make sure like it's dark enough, it's horror enough and um, and uh, I thought about the gameplay more and found out that uh, it's not enough. So I needed voice acting and I knew that this voice acting would be the, pretty much would be critical to how fun the game would be and I was right. And so when uh, the game got released, um, a lot of people loved the voice actress of uh, Emily and um, that 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 was great it was really really great and um, but uh, not a lot of youtubers played it when the game was out they thought it was a cheap game and you know, probably low low quality and stuff like that I, I I don't blame them but um, but uh, but then the surprising thing happened a year after um, one of the YouTubers played my game, The Beast Named Eliza, like four years ago from when I made Emily. And uh, he, he's a big uh, shot now, and he played um, Emily now. And, uh, and now I have like a small, small fan base that loves Emily, loves the voice acting and stuff like that. So, um, and yeah. After Emily, I made Emma Survival, which is a loose uh, sequel to Emily. And uh, at this time, I had no fan base, no nothing, another couple of hundred dollars uh, from what I made from Emily. In fact, I actually broke even, so <laughs> I got my two hundred dollars back and um, decided to um, uh, to up the notch for uh, MS Survival. And so um, I spent money on voice acting, art assets, and uh, tried to design the game around the art assets that I bought. And it turned out to be a uh, zombie horror. And um, again, this is a short game, probably like 30 minutes long. And um, I, I remember that um, no one wanted to play this. It, it did worse than Emily. And um, it's probably the profanity like I did. I mean, I couldn't even afford another voice actor to play the main character. It's, it was just too expensive. So I did it and um, the only way I could like act was that like, or act scary, like I just start cursing, like maybe this is acting, you know? But um, I, I should have uh, 
I shouldn't have like acted at all. I should have like hired somebody. Um, but um, yeah, and um, now uh, now after um, one of the big YouTubers that actually you know reviewed Emily, they, uh, they that fan base wanted to see the you know the part two of Emma Survival. Which, um, which I'd probably be making, and um, instead of doing it like a, a horror type idea, I, I'd probably focus more on um, Emily and uh, less on the zombies uh, for the part two. And let's see, what else could I remember um, when making this game? It didn't make a lot of money off of this game, it did worse, right? Um, there was a, there was, there was a time where I was like contemplating about like, should I be a game developer? Should, should I not be a game developer? I'm like, I really like this. And, uh, and so I guess I, uh, I made my next game, which is Harvest Island. There's a lot of things I want to talk about Harvest Island. For one, I've learned a lot from my past games. Like, I know what I should be doing. I know how should I. I know how I should develop this game. The scope of the game. If I'm committed to actually spend like two years on this game, which I did. Um, marketing, pretty important too. But um, from all like the past games I've made, um, Harvest Island is um, the more refined game, um, which is just basically about two siblings on an island and there's just a big mystery. And um, I actually got like, Quite a bit of publishers contacted me about publishing my game and stuff like that. You know, how they want a 50-50 split on I'll market your game uh, and you, know, you get to work on your development. And I spent a lot more money on Harvest Island <laughs> than, uh, than the chains that bound me. So I'm just going to leave it like that. But, um... It's actually doing a lot better than all of the games that I've been working on because um, there's like people are interested in a semi farming simulator that has like a storyline and stuff like that and um, and I market this like heck. Like I participated in Steam festivals, I participated and other um, competitions, game development competitions. I I even submitted it to like an IGN contest and uh, I didn't win, but I was like in the top 3%. That means this game has potential. And so I'm really excited about that. But it still needs quite a bit of work and and um, I'm really hoping that this this game will be like my break, you know? I, I spent so many years on game development and nothing has come to fruition. I really hope Harvest Island is just the one that, the one game that I've learned that I'm actually addressing the problems and making sure that when this game comes out, I'd have enough money to uh, fund my next game, which is, I don't know, maybe I'll go back to the chains that bound me, but put it into a different engine. No idea, no idea, but the work on this Harvest Island is, is immeasurable, immeasurable. I'm a jack of all trades, master of none and that's why um, 
you know, when you go see my website, it's it looks pretty professional. I mean, like it doesn't look sloppy. You go to my Steam page, it's it's pretty nice and stuff like that. Like I put a lot of time and effort into marketing and making things look really nice, really appealing, really visually appealing because that's what I learned from game development. People judge. Well, gamers judge uh, a game from their appeals first, and then the second would be the gameplay and how interesting it is. And so, um, yeah, the more I spend on game development, it, the more uh, I understand what it is to become an indie game developer. And um, usually, you make games because you like it and you want to share it with, um, you know, friends and family, or you know. Someone who wants to play online, uh, but um, I found out that if you want to actually make a business, you gotta make games that's interesting to play. And sometimes the games that um, that you want to make, it's just it just won't happen. It just won't happen. And um, Harvest Island is half and half of that, so I'm hoping this farming simulator actually does really well. And that's my game development story, many 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 stars ago. It's uh, it's been one heck of a ride, one heck of a ride. But if this video goes viral, I don't know, 100,000 starting to do YouTube pretty seriously. Um, wishlist the game. Definitely wishlist the game. And um, support me and um, follow all my social medias. <laughs>